from this monday 15th of january 2024 and on 16th of january 2024 i am going to do a course on progressions now as you must be knowing that in all of my courses i present my own researches right so whenever you join any of my course you don't learn what is conventionally taught anywhere else in any astrological institute or at any place for that matter i teach my own research that i have found working in my experience and along with that if something is coming from classics that i also teach but this classical teaching at maximum only comprises 50 55% of what i am going to teach and remaining is my researches that are being revealed for the first time so any content given on youtube that i don't teach any content that is taught by some other astrologer written in some other book in any language that i don't teach in my courses to be very honest with you it only the classical principles of sages that i teach that too with my own interpretation the same is going to happen with progression also in this progression course i will be teaching two established methods of progression of course with my own suitable modifications of how they should be used to time events and two of my own researches but what i think that many of you don't know what a progression is so in this particular video i will be teaching you one of my most favorite methods of progression that is completely developed by myself only right so i have conceptualized this formula right worked over this formula and i myself am going to present you this formula as well but first of all what is progression progression is a tool to time event like dasha transit progression is also a tool to time event the speciality with progression is that generally it is very simple to apply it is very simple to apply owing to this particular reason that generally in the application of progressions either very little to no calculation is involved or it can be made very simple with the help of tables as you will see in a while another thing is that you see if you are using dashas then first of all you will have to find the applicable dasha and then there are a plethora of dashas right multiple dashas are there so you will have to first of all choose the right dasha then you have to calculate the dasha then you will apply the dasha and dasha application principles are many basic principle is whatever result is promised by a planet that happens in dasha but the result that is promised by planet the analysis of the same is quite tedious and to know the results of planet you will have to learn astrology for quite some time that to in depth that just a normal reading and understanding of astrology will not do second thing is transit now with respect to transit basically transits are common for everyone if sun is into aries this sun is in aries for everyone variations are made based on the ascendant rashi moon rashi but at a point of time it becomes common for too many people and obviously everyone is living their own life going through different set of events and experiences so the applicability of transit is not 100% right so classics are very clear sages are very clear that transit have to be applied with respect to dasha antar dasha only later on i think in last 40 50 years with the advent of nadi astrology separate uses of transit have also came into being but then again the level of results that a separate uses of transit can predict is quite limited i will be very very honest with you now with respect to progression all these problems are solved first of all the progression principles need no specific combination to be present in horoscope so any progression principle can be applied in any horoscope as i told you the calculation is very easy the calculation is very simple it can be made even more simple with the help of tables so the application and calculation is very easy and because in progression planets are moving 
So owing to this particular factor, the analysis is also very easy. I will give you a particular example. If you wanted to time marriage using Dasha, you will have to look at seventh house. You will have to look at Venus. You will look at the planets influencing the seventh house, seventh Lord and Venus in Rashi and Navamsh. Then out of all of these planets, out of all of these planets, you will have to find the stronger planet. And after finding the stronger planet, you will have to check whether the planet is beneficial or not. Now, if the planet is beneficial, it will give good results such as good marriage happening of marriage, beating of life partner, etc. And if the planet is bad, then the planet will give bad result with respect to marriage. That is fights, obstacles, hurdles, divorce, separation, and all of these things, right? So the analysis is quite cumbersome. Now, when you are coming to progressions, what is basically happening that you either the planet is moving or one Rashi or a house is activated and you just have to take the natural significations of the Rashi house and just have to look at the formation that the planet is making and you can easily time events. So when it comes to timing event, progression is a very, very ultimate tool. And I think no student, because you know, as a teacher, I see the progress of students from where they start, what they learn, right? What type of learning and what type of approach makes the student good in astrology, which approach helps them learn quickly, right? These things I have observed, right? Over long time, I am teaching since more than five years now, right? And in these five years, I have taught two hours every day, right? So if you talk about my teaching skills, or if you talk about my teachings, I have taught about almost more than... 3000 hours now. In this 3000 hours, I have dealt with many students, right? Many of whom, many of those people who wanted to become astrologers, many of those people who were just, you know, wanting to read their own horoscopes and the horoscope of near and dear ones. And by dealing with them, I know what the students need, right? And what is the right approach that they should take? What is the method that they should go through? And I will tell you after teaching for initial one or two years, I have changed the approach that I, you know, present my content in front of students, right? To make it better, right? To make it better, to make it better for the student to understand. So many of the students, a uh, common compliment that I always get is the researches that I do. People say that these are the things that are very amazing and secondarily the way things are designed the way things are presented the way the courses are designed people love this why i am talking about this particular thing because if you are looking to time events through astrology either as a professional astrologer you want to know how to time events or only for your own life and your near and dear ones you want to know how to time events progression is something that you cannot miss at all Right. So progressions have to be used. The technique that I am presenting to you today, my own technique, the technique is very, very simple. The technique is very simple. So as per the sages, maximum human longevity is 120 years. Now, of course, there are few people, a handful of, that live more than 120 years also. But generally, maximum longevity for human is taken 120 years. And maximum longevity for that matter is taken for every being. Now the concept is that this 120 years is equally divided into 12 houses of horoscope. So each house starting from the ascendant activates for the activates for 10 years. That is bond number one. Now if one house is activating for 10 years, and one house is having 30 degrees. Then in one year, how much degree it will cover? It will cover three degrees. So basically you can say that first year to 10th year is ruled by the first house. And in this 10 years, every year is ruled by three degrees of the first house, three degrees each. So three, zero to three degree, three to six degree, six to nine degree, nine to 12 degree, 12 to 15 degree, so on and so forth. Then the next 10 years, 10 years to 20 years are ruled by second house. The same division is done. 
right? 21st year is ruled by second house, zero degree to three degree and so on and so forth. That is the basic funda. Now in this basic funda, you know that one house is getting activated for 10 years. And keeping this particular fact in mind that one Rashi is having 30 degrees and because it is covering 10 years, because it is being covered in 10 years, three degrees will be covered in one year. One more thing comes to my mind. That this three degree span that is getting activated every year is also the duration of one dashamsh. 1d10. Now, generally in the field of astrology, people think that dashamsh or d10 is to predict about profession. I don't know who told them this. If you are talking of how classics or how the sages are using divisional charts, there is no one who has said that dashamsh is to be used for profession except for parashar. And what parashar have said? Have parashar told you that dashamsh is to be used for profession? Parashar says dashamsh e mahatvalam. Mahat means big, phalam means result. It basically means the shams indicate big results. Now this big result is profession. I don't think so. Big result can be any big result. And my interpretation is any big thing that is happening in life, marriage, childbirth, divorce, promotion, gain of social status, name, fame, recognition, bad time, financial misery, right, or financial benefits, all of these things which are very impactful in your life. Something, if you write your biography, something that you will want to mention is a great result that is seen from D10. So according to me, because Parashar himself have clearly said that the Shamsha Mahatfalam, the Shamsha indicate great results. For Dasha Antar Dasha. And the major things that happen in Dasha Antar Dasha, one should use the Shamsha. And this particular technique is also employing this particular progression technique that I am telling you because it is covering three degrees in one year. It is very benefiting to check the Shams also along with the Rashi chart to time events better. In fact, because this technique is developed by myself and all the techniques that I teach in my courses, I have used them in my prediction for at least five years. So since last five years, not last five years, like I up I used these techniques, this technique up to 2021-22. Right. So it is giving result. So from that experience, I can tell you that D10 is more important as compared to the Rashi. In Rashi, our approach is very simple. Any age you will want to predict, you will go to that particular age. You will see in which house, in which degree this age is coming. Then you will say any planet situated. Then you will see any planet situated in that house, any planet aspecting that house, the lord of that house. If falling in these degrees, then the event related to the planet will fructify. Whatever event is indicated by the planet. For example, you say third house is activated and seventh lord is going into ninth house, aspecting the third house. So because it is seventh lord going into ninth house, the lord of marriage going into the house of fortune, aspecting the third house and the degree of the seventh lord in ninth house is activated as per this progression table, then it is the time for marriage. The simple application needs to be done. And in the same manner, you will see that this is which set of degree, first set of degree, second set of degree, third set of degree, fourth set of degree, because it is, because every degree is three like every year is three degrees, you will say, you will see which set of degree is getting activated in that particular year. And the same number of the shams you will see in that particular Rashi, which is situated in that particular house, which is activated. Let me illustrate it to you with help of tables and charts. As I told you, tables and charts will make the thing easy. So let's start from there only. So first of all, this particular table, you will have to remember that you can pause the video, note it down. So you say if someone is getting married at the age of 25. Now, how do we calculate the age? For example, you say 
someone is born in 94 march so 2023 minus 1994 in 2023 the person will complete 29 years and 2023 march onwards person will be in his 30th year this is the way you will go with it now what i was saying that suppose someone gets married in married in his 25th year so you go to the table and you see that 25th year falls between 12 to 15 degrees in third house now open the horoscope of the person and you see is there any planet who is aspecting the third house situated in third house while being situated between 12 degrees to 15 degrees in any house if yes then based on the nature and house lordship of the planet predict the event if the third lord is conjoining with a planet aspected by a planet and that planet also happens to be between 12 degrees to 15 degrees predict result related to that planet this is step number 1 for example if i have to take this horoscope suppose then in this particular horoscope say the person right now person is born in 1995 1995 march the person is born in it is 2024 january i have to you say predict event for 2024 march onwards so in 2024 the person will complete his 29 years and will be of 30 years of age now as per the table 30th year will come between 27 degrees to 30 degrees of third house going to the horoscope third house we see gulik is situated there but that is 0 degrees we want planet between 27 to 30 degrees only other than that there is influence of no planet as such the third lord is jupiter that is situated in the second house around 20 degrees we want activation of 27 to 30 degrees so this jupiter is also out of question and this jupiter is aspected by saturn 10th aspect of saturn and this saturn is 26 degrees saturn is 26 degrees means the effect of saturn should have been there in the 29th year 2023 march to 2024 march the result of saturn will be there right so saturn being the fifth lord in the fifth house some good result related to educational achievements gain of power position child birth these things should happen and because it is the fourth lord in the fifth house also happiness from mother gain of land property vehicle and all of these things should have happened to the native for the 30th year 2024 march onwards we don't see any event happening as per the rashi chart it is no problem at all now what you have to do you have to go to the dashamsh table now you see right here that 30th year is the last year in the third house or you say 30th year is the 10th year in the third house so now you say which rashi is in third house in third house there is sagittarius and what is the 10th dashamsh or last dashamsh of sagittarius to do that you have to follow this particular table this is dashamsh table. so third house is having rashi sagittarius and the last of the shams first of the shams is sagittarius itself second of the shams is capricorn third of the shams is aquarius fourth of the shams is pisces fifth of the shams is aries sixth of the shams is taurus seventh of the shams is gemini eighth of the shams is cancer ninth of the shams is leo and tenth of the shams is virgo now you have to see virgo in the d10 chart to predict what is going to happen in 30th year now you look at d10 chart and in that d10 chart you look at virgo you see virgo is having mercury so event related to mercury should happen what mercury indicates intelligence education this mercury is in own rashi to so gain of intelligence gain of education good relationship with relatives and all of these things you should predict for mercury positive results for mercury you should predict planet is situated there take the planet take the rashi decide the condition of the planet and predict it is not necessary that the dashamsh that is getting activated will have some planet in d10 chart only 
in that scenario what you will do you will take that rashi back to d1 chart and this is the most important technique in this complete setup this is the most important technique take the dashamsha rashi back to d1 chart and most importantly where the lord of the dashams is situated wherever lord of the dashams is situated that particular rashi should also be seen in d1 chart and event indicated by that particular rashi will fructify here the dashamsha is virgo the lord of virgo is gemini situated in virgo itself you check virgo in the d1 chart this virgo is having 12th aspect of rahu and 7th aspect of venus so event related to venus gain of marriage getting girlfriend going into relationship will happen this venus being 8th lord and 6th house health problems can also be there this venus being lagna lord and 6th house there will be struggles competitions enmity can also be there rahu is in the ascendant and rahu being affected by sun mars and mercury out of which most powerful is sun rahu is giving result of sun sun being the 11th lord and 7th house is indicating gain of money through acquaintances and the 12th aspect of rahu over gemini will make sure that this result happens in the 30th year so this is how you are going to predict events i hope the example is very clear at least i have explained it very clearly if there is any confusion you can listen to it again and again and then you will be able to analyze it better one more horoscope i think will help you we already know the event say this is the horoscope this is the horoscope of a person who is born in october right this is horoscope of a person who is born in october and this person gets married in may 1883 so now because this person is born in october and he is getting married in may 1883 we have to consider 1882 so 1882 and the person is born in 1869 right so 1882 minus 1869 this person was 13 years of age completed his 13 year he was 14 years of age now you go to the table to see that 14th year is coming into 9 to 12 degrees of second house 9 to 12 degrees of second house second house there is saturn but it is not between 9 to 12 degrees second house is affected by rahu rahu is of 12 degrees and ninth lord is mars and mars is of 25 degrees this mars is with venus venus of 23 degrees this mars is with mercury this mercury is of 11 degrees we want a planet between 9 to 12 degrees so mercury is activated rahu is activated Jupiter is also aspecting this Mars, but Jupiter is twenty-seven degrees, so leave this Jupiter also. So Mercury is activated and Rahu; these two planets are activated now because Rahu is in tenth house with tenth Lord. A great karma will happen for this native. A great karma will happen for the native. This is horoscope of Mahatma Gandhi. He got married. marriage is a great karma so whenever 10th house is activated it can give marriage also and it is clearly indicating to this fact that the wife of mahatma gandhi kasturba gandhi will help him in his work and in his undertakings greatly that she did as a devout wife also along with that you see that mercury is also activated which is the 12th lord in the ascendant and 9th lord in ascendant and 9th lord in ascendant getting activated does indicate some celebration of celebration of some religious function which happened with his marriage and it is 12th lord in the ascendant also we should indicate either some losses or foreign travels for gandhi ji whether this have happened or not that you verify yourself coming to dashamsh which i said you is the most important technique in this bigger technique this is the activation of fourth dashamsh of, of second house fourth dashams of second house second house is having rashi scorpio 
and the fourth dashamsh of scorpio is 1 2 3 4 libra now fourth dashamsh of scorpio is libra now you check this libra in d10 this libra in d10 is having a debilitated sun point 1 secondarily the lord of this libra is venus and this venus is situated in taurus the technique was why i am taking second horoscope to illustrate it because in the first horoscope the lord of the rashi was in the rashi itself right so here libra is getting activated libra is having a debilitated sun predicts things related to debilitated sun mental tension uh, humiliation feeling sad and all of these things you should say mahatma gandhi writes in his autobiography that when his father was dying he was having a physical relationship with his wife and he could not pay attention to the calls of his father because of which he was very ashamed also so these things you can read in his autobiography right the important point is that the rashi libra is activated the fourth dashamsh of the rashi in the second house is scorpio libra is activated and this lord of libra is situated in taurus d2 sorry taurus d10 now take this taurus back to the rashi chart to see that this taurus is the 8th house which is aspected by 4th and 5th lord saturn and it is aspected by mars that is the 7th house lord and second house lord. now because the 7th house lord is aspecting it indicates marriage because second house lord is activating important addition in family should be told because 5th house lord and 4th house lord both are activating it should indicate comfort for mahatma gandhi also gain of conveniences for mahatma gandhi also extension of family for mahatma gandhi also and gain of position power and good good gains or good progress in educational fields should also be indicated for mahatma gandhi in this particular year right so this is how you are going to use this technique with the help of these two tables i think the calculation is very easy most importantly you will have to pay focus to that particular rashi which is occupied by the dashamsh lord in dashamsh itself that rashi should be taken back to d1 chart that rashi should be taken back to rashi chart and analyzed accordingly right so this is my method of progressions right so in the course webinar i promise that i will be teaching two traditional techniques and two of my research techniques but this one technique i have already taught you in this youtube video and whatever i teach publicly i don't teach it in the course because i value the time of my students and my own time as well so this is a fifth extra technique that i have kept out in the course i will be teaching two traditional techniques and two techniques developed by myself which will be entirely different from this particular technique this technique i have given publicly so that you can apply it in horoscopes and predict events in a easier manner with more confidence and get better hold over the prediction of events i think this offering will help you and will make your astrological journey will help in your astrological journey and will make your astrological practice easy thank you for watching